What? Did you know that by using recent Google data and a newly updated add-on for Blender, you can capture 3D geometry and textures from any populated city in the world and bring that into your scenes? I mean, how many times does it happen that you're working on a 3D scene, animation, or still, and when it comes to the background, you just really don't want to have to think about what you see? Well guys, I think I found a solution for you. So some of you subscribers to the channel might remember when we used an old version of this add-on to import OpenStreetMap city layouts. Well, 20% of you anyways, that 80% of you guys need to get subbed up to get notified. Why not subscribe? It's free. And now with just a few clicks inside of Blender, you can create 3D scanned renders of cities across the world. Perfect for things like a background behind a Spider-Man swinging sequence. Sound pretty cool? So without further ado, let's get into it. But first, this video is brought to you by, nope, just kidding. There's no sponsor for this video. This video was just brought to you by you guys and the cool people over on Patreon that support these videos. You can join now to get access to like 100 downloads for different scenes, assets, and project files that you're free to use, explore, tweak, and use in your own personal projects. Like this project file right here. So before we jump into the 3D stuff with Blender, you'll have to download the free, newly updated Blender add-on I was telling you about. It's BLOSM, Blender OpenStreetMaps, and there's a Gumroad link in the video description that you'll want to follow. The add-on, as I said, is available completely free. Just go ahead and put the price of zero in and click purchase to download. If you can afford it though, I highly encourage you to throw a few dollars towards this add-on developer to help him keep the add-ons up to date and to support him in releasing cool updates like the one we're exploring in this video. This developer also sells a paid version of the add-on for like 15 bucks or something, and it has some really cool features. It works way better with the OpenStreetMap data if you're going that route and includes all kinds of cool assets, textured buildings, and really a lot of one-click solutions for really fast results. Another great way to support these Blender developers, as well as this channel a little bit. But enough talk, with the add-on downloaded, you're gonna wanna go ahead and install it inside of Blender now. So opening a new scene in Blender and going edit down to preferences, we'll switch it over to add-ons and then locate the blosm.zip file that you just downloaded. Select that file and click install add-on. Then under the user installed add-ons, you're gonna wanna make sure it's enabled. And now it's time to get that Google data I was talking about. Start by following that Google Google data link that I have in the video description below. This obviously will require a Google account and also a valid payment source setup, which is kind of annoying. And I guess it's Google's way of like locking down their stuff and proving that you're a human and all that. It is completely free up to like $200 worth of credits or something every month. If you just don't have access to any sort of valid payment option or credit card, you can always go the OpenStreetMap way with this add-on as well. So once you're logged in, you're going to set up your account for a Google Maps platform. Here's where you have to add a valid payment method. Just go ahead and fill out all your information. Like I said, Google probably already has it. <laughs> Add in your payment method here with a credit card or a debit card. You're gonna have to fill out a little bit of information on what you're gonna be using the Google Maps for. Go ahead and do whatever fits your match first. This is just visualization data. And it is just for personal use. I don't know about what the legalities of using any of this for commercial work. And once you finish, you're gonna get an API key. This is exactly what you're gonna need and want. So go ahead and copy that API key and then you can continue to the Google Maps platform. And make sure you don't set up any restrictions on that API key. Then the only other thing you have to do on Google is enable the map API tiles. So go to the APIs and services in your Google Maps platform and under the map tiles API, click enable. Nice. With it enabled, you should be ready to go. Now back in the Blender preferences under the add-on you just installed, you're going to want to paste your API key under the Google 3D tiles. Control V on a PC or Command V on a Mac. You'll need to choose a directory to store your downloaded terrain files. So go ahead and give that a folder under the add-on there. I actually recommend just saving a Blender file, quitting and reopening Blender so that information is stored there. But now if you hit N to bring up your properties tab, you will see you have the OpenStreetMap add-on at the bottom of the tab window here. And now we're ready to start creating some 3D scanned cities. For starters, we're going to change it from OpenStreetMap data to Google 3D tiles because we're working with the 3D scans right now. And then you're just going to start by clicking the first option here, select. This is going to bring up a map in your web browser from where you want to select the 3D geometry data from. Like I mentioned earlier, you'll be able to find data for all of the populated cities in the world. So I'm just going to scroll in here down to say New York because we know we got some cool buildings there. Over in the Manhattan area here, I'm just going to zoom Zoom way in, we have Central Park and stuff. Now it's tempting to select a fairly big section of city, but trust me, you're gonna wanna go super small on your first import especially. Because it's importing tiles and not exactly the selection that you're gonna select here, when you click show selection rectangle. So we're gonna really crop this down to something tight and small. Make this box really just like 
selecting something really small, just this little street corner. By the little street corner, these are like giant buildings, but yeah, something small. So now I'm gonna click copy right here, and that's gonna copy all the coordinates from this little selection here. Now, jumping back into Blender, all you have to do is click paste, and it puts your right coordinates in here. And now we're gonna choose the level of details. And for this, I like to go as detailed as possible. Again, this is gonna take a much longer time to import. And if you're having a problem importing, try less detail, but I'm gonna go all the way down to buildings with more details. Everything else can be left to normal for now. And we're just gonna click import. This is where you better hope that you selected a very tiny amount of the map because it will take a while to import. Bing, bing, bing. And bada -bing, we just had it pop up. There we go. You can see we have the 3D tiles there. If you hit the period key on your keyboard, it will not do that. If you hit the period key on your number pad, it will zoom all the way out so you see that 3D scanned data. And it looks like we have some pretty cool buildings there. So I'm gonna hit S and 0.1 to scale it down. And if you click on viewport shading here to texture shading, you can see that we got some cool 3D scans right inside of Blender. Obviously it's not gonna hold up for super close ups, but this would be amazing for a lot of landscapes and backdrops for city renders. Even the trees have some detail to them as well as the vehicles down there on the road. So again, hear me out. Use this for a Spider-Man swinging sequence and it would be totally awesome. But one thing you might notice is that we switch to cycles render here. The lighting here, let me just make this a sun lamp, isn't having any effect. And that's because this object here is made up of a bunch of different materials here. That's just the way this 3D model is imported. It comes with a shadeless material. But luckily, the add-on developer has a little option here to replace the materials with a new one. And if you do this right, you can do it all with one click and not have any manual work to it. So we're just gonna split our window here and open up the shader editor over on the left hand here. So we wanna keep our texture, but we can basically replace these with the principal shader node to get some better looking materials. So I'm just gonna hit X and delete those and then go shift A and add in the principled shader. Connect the color to the base color. Now we're working all off of the top material here. It's important to remember what material you're changing here as we're gonna be copying the data from this material. Connect it up to the surface of the material output. And then something I like to do to just add a little bit more detail to the city is give it some roughness as well using this base color. So drop that into the roughness tab, then go shift A and add in the converter color ramp. Drop it right there. Flip the color ramp by hitting that little button there on the drop down, and then giving the black a little bit more of a gray look and pulling the white in a little bit. This is obviously super rough, but adding a little bit of this to make the whites in the scene a little bit more reflective and the darks a little bit less reflective just adds a little bit better materials. You can also use this as a normal map if you drop it in right there, and then go shift A and add in vector bump node. Connect the normal to the height right there and give the strength something very small like 8.1. With that material set up, if I scroll back here and then choose under the tools material here, click custom, Give it the material I was just tweaking, which is the material 162. So just start typing in 162 and you'll see it pop up right on top. Select it and then click replace materials and bada bing, all the materials are instantly updated and we're getting actual shadows on our scene like you would with a normal sun lamp. Now, if I was gonna turn this into a rendered scene, I'll go ahead and open up an HDR environment texture in the world settings here, picking a cool one from HDR Haven. And as you can see, we have some really nice rendering going on now of the city. And you can go ahead and do whatever sort of color grading, animating, rendering you want. Pretty cool stuff. Something I like to do as well is add a little bit of fog to the scene by adding in a cube scaling it up nice and big, and then giving this cube, while well, we have our material editor up here, doing the principled volume shader this time, connecting it to the volume output, and then just giving this a very small density of 0 0.02, then also changing the anastrophe to be something like a 0.3 or 0.4, giving it a slightly blue-green color, making it as bright as it can be, and usually looks kind of cool. The last tip to kind of improve the rendering a little bit on these buildings is because they're 3D scanned, you'll definitely be able to tell that you have some of those edges that look very 3D scanny, and there's just not anything you can always do about it. But one thing that I found helped a little bit is if you go right click shade smooth, and then under the shade smooth set, is that under the shade smooth settings, because obviously this doesn't look good yet, you choose auto smooth, and then you change the angle to be something by cranking this up to a value of like 20 or 30. And I thought it just helped the look a little bit more, squaring up some of those edges when you go into rendered view, making things look just a little bit better. But that wraps up this short video on how to import Google's 3D data into Blender. Again, if you want the finished scene files, it's available over on Patreon. If you guys had any questions, let me know in the comments below. Have some fun with this add-on. Try importing some city landscapes of your backyard, maybe, and see if there's data for it, because who knows? Maybe Google has more information than you know. But that's gonna do it for me, guys. Hope you had fun, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye!